never deal with spider mites again. Uh, I haven't dealt with them in a long time. And I mean, I don't know uh, exactly why. I think it's healthy plants amongst other things. But let's get into this. For today's Grow Talk, we're going to be talking about spider mites. All right. How to get rid of them and how to keep them from coming back. Because in the question coming up, the grower had them two times in a row is afraid to pop beans at all ever again. Knowing that, man, if you let them go, if you're like, if I, I've seen some scary stories. I've seen some pictures of just webbed up buds. They'll suck the life right out of your plants. Ugh. If you can, have you seen those, Scotty, when we've covered oh, back yeah. in the day? I haven't seen it in a while. A top cola, it's like web. Just, and that's, that's on the grower, man. But if you follow the steps you're about to learn in this video, you will be able to maintain a pest-free grow and get a lot more high quality harvest moving forward. Definitely want to be able to get to harvest, man. Man, it can't have. I've never had the unsmokable webbed bud, but let's prevent it, man. So let's get into this. This is brought to you by Optic Foliar Transport, guys. If you haven't checked out Optic Foliar, they have a lot of great products uh, for foliar feeding as well as we'll get into this transport. A couple tips on how to use it to make your product go farther and how to beat mites. So let's yeah. get a question here. This is off of DudeGrows.com, guys. Get your grower questions up on DudeGrows.com. There's plenty of the grower. This one's pretty fresh, actually, as of today. So we don't have a lot of comments on it right now, but there's a great community helping out over there. And anybody can use a free account. And while you're there, use the search bar. So this is from AAH3880. I need help with spider mites in my grow. I've lost two grows of about 14 plants and I'm getting pissed. I hear you, buddy. I went above and beyond like crazy. I've bleached everything before each grow. I've sat down and made sure the room was a thousand. Wait, that's a million percent sanitized, actually. A million ah. percent sanitized. But freaking yet, I've gotten spider mites and I got my hands on some old school strains. I don't even think about popping them until I figure this out. Um, um, so we can take it from there. Take it from sure. there. As far as getting them two times, let's get into first, take it into identifying. Let's, sure. let's how, how do we know we have spider mites? Uh, you want to just take a look for uh, spider mites. It's the underside of the leaves. You'll see some eggs on there. There's something called, I think it's stippling, but it's a little uh, dots you'll see where they're putting their yep. little mouth part in there and sucking the, uh, sucking the juice out. And then the last thing, man, is if you didn't do any of those and waited too long, you're going to see webs. And by the time you see webs, you got a problem. Now, let me touch on that. Uh, when you, we're saying scouting, like the, as with a lot of things, when you're dealing with pests, being vigilant at doing it, when you're in your grow, look at spider mites aren't hard to find. And if you find them early, they're not hard to deal with. It's when people let it go. You need to be looking underside your and lower leaves. I find them to appear on the lower leaves first a lot of the time. So be looking in your lower canopy. Look at that plant in the back corner of your room. That's hard to get to. You don't even need it. You're going to want to have a jeweler's loop, but you can identify this problem with the naked eye as well and know what sure. you're dealing with right away. So sure. how do I identify? You have uh, the, the, what, a few different types of mites is what you wanted to get into? Uh, you know what? Just a two-spotted spider mite is the one that I've only seen. They do sometimes start out a little reddish, but they turn white pretty quick. And you can always tell, man, uh, they've got just two spots on the back and it's pretty easy. Two-spotted spider mite. Next thing I see here, which I say is not just for spider mites, but for anything in your grower, the sticky traps. Yeah. Yellow absolutely. sticky traps that are out there. I like to have some at soil level as well, uh, mid and canopy level. You don't have to go excessive with them. These are there not to defend, like, I'm not saying sticky traps are what you're using to beat this problem. You're using it to find out what problem you have or don't have. You might yeah, put something on there and then you get a really good chance to look at it without it moving around. Then you get your 60 times, 30 times loop out and you can really identify what you're dealing with. So I'm a, I'm a fan of sticky traps. Yeah, it's sometimes tough when those bugs are running around. You can't really get a good look at them. Uh, so sticky traps, at least they're stuck on there. You can see those two spots and you know exactly what you got. And also as you, you want to monitor the population, you know, you might knock these things down and then you see one or two coming back and that lets you know, to, to nip it in the bud. They could make like human sized sticky traps and somehow it traps you. But what would be the attractant to it? It'd be a lot of it's different like, things you can put on there. Well, just speaking of spider mites, they're not really, attra the yellow attracts them, but they're also very easily blown in the wind. That's how they move from one uh, plant to the other. And so they do get blown uh, from one plant to the other. So we're getting blown onto them sticky traps or at least in the uh, uh, vicinity of those sticky traps, I think is a good thing. Well, let's say you found out you know, you've identified them. How are we going to get rid of them? First off, you, depending on what tools you have, changing your environment. Scotty's got a little yep. chart here of hatching, which I like. Um, but 
let's first hit on that. I mean, the hotter it is, the more they come out, right? Yeah. I mean, at 60 degrees, uh, you've got yourself takes like 15 days for them to incubate. So you got a solid two weeks for them to go from uh, an egg to an adult. At uh, 68 degrees, it goes down to seven, you know, 6.7 days. When you get up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which was a lot, what a lot of people's indoor grows are running, you're at 2.8 days. I mean, you're literally at, you know, every three days, those things are multiplying and we'll get into that. Oh my gosh. That's like they're at spring break. Cause they're like, they're partying on the beach, man. Uh, <laughs> they go from 15 to 2.8 days at 86 degrees. So not everybody's wait, 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 have wait, this wait. control. It's not like spring break because it's a three to one male or female to male ratio. Okay. You take me to a beach where you get a three to one female to male ratio. I'm there, man. The, uh, if you, if you have a sealed grow or if you run AC or you have the ability to bring in cool air and you have, you know, doing this for a few days while you're handling your spraying and trying to handle the infestation um, is really going to slow them down. You don't want to keep it there too long because it's un- in turn going to slow down your grow. It'll slow sure. down your grow's metabolism as well, but it's a great tool if you can bring your temperatures down. I like spraying. If you're in veg, guys, spraying works great. The one trick with spraying, of course, is coverage and how often you're doing it. By coverage, I mean you want to get as much as the underside of leaves as possible. We're going to go with a product. There's a lot of products out there. A couple of examples would be like neem, uh, Dr. Zyme. Um, Azadiractin is a, is, a, is a fraction of neem that's really good. Um, you've got the uh, the microbe ones, the boss area, bossa nova or whatever it's called. There's a, there's a lot of options there, but it's important the frequency and how you spray these things. We just talked about the life cycle. Uh, you've got it at uh, 86 degrees. You've got every three days that these things are hatching. So you need to spray every three days because these sprays do not kill the eggs. They kill the adult bugs or they kill the bugs, but they do not kill the eggs. So you got to break that life cycle. And I would spray every three days, at least for 10 days, that math would work or two weeks if you can, um, and then continue to scout like crazy after the spray. So you do not want to bring these into bloom. We'll get into that in just a second. This is where I'm going to tell you with that optic foliar transport, um, when you're spraying, this enables you, for one, you can spray with the lights on because if you don't if you leave your lights on depending on what you're spraying you can get little beads little button they magnet of water which is or your spray solution which will magnify the light your grow light and burn your leaves yeah what do they say surface tension is what's that called when the it it just there's Mm -hmm. a reason why it wants to stay in a bubble and then so somehow you got to break that surface tension and that is what uh uh transport does so the only problem scotty i've seen mainly uh just to hit back on spraying frequency growers that don't you know mark it on the calendar Mm -hmm. And then also scouting like crazy. Those two yep. things. And coverage yep. is hard, man. Get a good sprayer. We're not going to get into it now. Get a fogger. Those work awesome. Get a mini fogger. Some great way to apply um, whatever product you are for the mites. Yeah, you can nip it in veg. Once you go to flower with these things, your option, you don't want to spray anything on them or there's much less options. So you got to touch on mites and flower. So I'm meaning developed flowers. You don't get developed flowers till about two weeks on, three weeks on some strains. Right. I'm right. okay the first three weeks depending on your flower development of spraying some things but really you don't want to be spraying much so mites in flower i look at other options uh mechanical removal i've heard of some interesting things uh from one uh pressurized like cold water spray you've done it scotty yeah i've where done you can it to get me out of a jam. They, they hate it you're literally just spraying them with cold water knocking them off the buds you're drowning them. Course, you're, don't... you're you're filling their whatever it is and you're actually drowning them so it's it's uh so it's kind of cool man make sure you have environmental control after this you don't want to have big humid area that you just sprayed some buds. Um, I've heard of growers even using pressurized air from down to an air can for maybe a smaller grow or having some type wow. of way if you have a compressor or pressurized air or also very carefully. Now, I'm not saying I fully suggest all these. It depends on it depends on your growth style. I've seen people even use a vacuum at a, a turn down sure. speed to get rid of my at this point. As long as you're getting as long as they, I was just going to say, as long as you have a long hose and the part, the, you know, the, the main part of the vacuum vacuum is not in your grow. Don't bring the vacuum yeah. in your grow. <laughs> yes. That's actually, I, I um, never do that. I get a nice long hose and I keep the vacuum way outside my grow, man, just to keep contaminants out. Uh, and predators. That's another great option. If you have a decent population or it doesn't even have to be a decent and you want to release predator mites, predator mites yep. will go in there. They can do a pretty good job. Some people 
concerned about the predator mites staying around. Will they be in the mud? When they don't have food, some of them um, get carnivorous or they just leave. Carnivorous, that's not the right word. Cannibalize. Cannibalizing, yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty creepy yeah. Yeah, when they just start eating each other after they're done eating the bugs. But hey, as long as they, as long as they did um, what I wanted to do, I don't care what they do after work, right? We dig on Arbico Organics, great source of information over there, even mm. just to learn as far as about predators or what type of beneficials that you could get um, that will work for you in flowering when you don't want to spray things. Absolutely. More importantly, I just, yeah. Hang on. I just want to go over real quick the environmental thing. When you are mm -hmm. knocking these down, super important to lower your temperatures. You got to slow the life cycle of those things down. I think they, an adult will lay 300 eggs. I mean, that's pretty, you know, you, you better slow that down. You can either have them doing that once every four day, every two or three days or once every 14, 15 days. We don't want these again. This grower is just looking back at them two grows, two grows lost, right. which means you're, to me, it means you're bringing them in. Yep. Don't cross contaminate, man, with the, not even just the outside world, like maybe your house, maybe your dog's bringing them in, sits on the couch, you sit there, pet your dog. If you've had them twice, it's likely you're going to get them a third or a fourth time. You got to be clean to go in your grow, change the clothes if you're outside. I don't know. I haven't gone to the extremity of needing a shower every time, but I can no. see depending on what I'm back. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, even just walking out through a bunch, if you've got grass or you're walking to your grow, it's a shed out back and you're walking through the grass, that on your on your clothes, on your socks and all that, man, it can do something. On your shoelaces, you can bring pathogens into your grow that way. Yes. And the number one tip that's the most affordable, guys, it's probably the third time we've said it, scout. And then yes. scout again. Scout means you're going around in there and you're looking. They're, they're not that hard to identify. You will see these. You will see the damage before it becomes a major problem and you can take care of it. And it's no different than scouting your trichomes or, you know, checking out your trikes. Same exact jeweler's loop and you're just looking here. This is my $5 jeweler's loop right here. I always keep it around and when I'm in there, I'm just taking a look. I look at the underside of the leaf. I look if there's anything clogging the stomatas and just make sure everything looks good. All right, Owen, I hope we helped you out, guys. If you want a ton of more information on dudegrows.com, use that search bar. Just type in spider mites. You will come, 25, 30, 40, 50 posts are going to come up about growers dealing with these and great comments on them as well. Don't forget if we helped you or you're digging this, comment, like, subscribe, man, or leave your best tip in the comments. I know there's growers listening and have dealt with them. Um, what's the way that you've beat down on spider mites? Like to hear. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to know that there is a way to do it though. If you start uh, early, it's really important to start early. That'll be my final thoughts.